Sometimes what you're missing is a great villain. An unforgettable villain is someone that you hate but also secretly adore. That's right! And what if you had a methodology to craft an antagonist that is not evil just because, but that is as intense as the protagonist and captivates your audience? You're in the right place because today I'm going to give you 9 tips to help you write a truly memorable villain. And if you want to learn the key to having a deep, ruthless antagonist in your third act, watch until the end because I have a bonus tip for you that you don't want to miss. A villain is the antagonist of your story, but not any kind of antagonist. It's not a force or an idea, it's a specific character whose actions challenge your hero and make their journey harder. Villains are as important as the hero, because without them there would be no story. A villain reflects the crazy complexities of humanity, or lioness, or human octopusness. Okay, I'm just making up words at this point, but you get the idea. By the way, if you're new here, I'm screenwriter Pietro Schito, and you now have 8 seconds of evil laugh to hit that subscribe button to join Write for Animation, the YouTube channel that helps you become a professional animation screenwriter. Oops. Thank you. The real dragon warrior is coming home. This is the first appearance of Tai Lang in Kung Fu Panda, and also my first tip. Have them make an entrance. Tai Lang effortlessly escapes an inescapable prison, so we immediately get an idea of how dangerous he is. If you make your villain do something bad at the beginning, it'll send a clear message to the audience that he or she is evil. An unforgettable introduction makes the threat real. In The Hunchback of Notre Dame, we see how evil Frollo is from the very beginning. He follows the gypsies and kills one of them. Tip number two. The villain's actions must have real consequences. It can be as big as eliminating an entire population, or something smaller but equally impactful for the hero. In Tangle, Rapunzel's situation is clear and very real. She has no freedom. Mother Gothel's power over Rapunzel is tangible. She has convinced Rapunzel that her imprisonment is for her own good. Why can't I go outside? The outside world is a dangerous place. And she's so powerful that later convinces her to come back home to be locked away again. You were right, Mother. Mother Gothel has the power to defeat the hero, and that's what makes her a great villain. Tip number three. Give your villain a goal. A goal is one of the keys to writing a great villain. They must want something that leads them to take evil actions. Cruella wants a coat. Ursula wants to dethrone Triton. Jafar wants power. The motivations behind this goal reveals a lot about their character, and a good way to show a villain's motivation is through their backstory. Lotso was abandoned. Thailand was rejected by Owe. Syndrome was disappointed by Mr. Incredible. I am your number one fan! Maybe you decide not to include this in your film. That's okay, but writing it down will help you as a writer. You'll understand your antagonist's motivations better. Speaking of which, once your villain has a motivation, make them obsessed with it. Tip number four. Have your villain be devoted to their goal. Think about Scar. He's willing to kill his brother and nephew to get to a position of power. Nobody gets in the way of his goal. I killed Mufasa. No! Frollo had been searching for the gypsies' hideout for 20 years, chasing them and killing them, and won't stop until they're all dead. Syndrome prepared and built a whole organization to hunt down supers, just so he could someday get his revenge. And he doesn't even have real superpowers. I'm Syndrome! Your nemesis in it! When your antagonists want something, they must want it badly. What makes them dangerous is their will to do everything in their power to achieve that goal. I'm curious, what animation villain scared you as a kid? Let me know in the comments below. For me, it was Medusa from The Rescuers. And it is as simple as that. Tip number five. Make your villain be the cause of your hero's internal conflict. Not only is Syndrome a physical external danger, he's also an emotional internal trigger that reminds Mr. Incredible what it means to be a hero. Frollo believes that anyone who is different is an abomination. Quasimodo grew up listening to this rhetoric and views himself as such. This belief limits him, as he has to learn that he's not a monster. Both Frollo and Syndrome share something. They have a connection to the hero. Tip number six. 
Make your villain have a personal connection with the hero. I am your biggest fan. Mr. Incredible was Syndrome's idol, Mother Gothel is Rapunzel's stepmother, and Scar was Simba's uncle. Having this close connection will help strengthen your villain-hero relationship, arguably the most important relationship in your story. If not a literal connection, the villain can stand for something that is very personal to the hero, so even though they've never met before, it feels personal. Lotso strikes a chord in Woody because deep down Woody doubts and is love, and Lotso represents Woody's fears. Although Tai Lung is not related to Poe in any way, he fuels Poe's insecurities about not becoming a confident, strong Kung Fu master. How are you gonna change this into the Dragon Warrior? Running up the protagonist's emotions keeps the audience invested. Your villain should not be a faceless evil object your hero is fighting. The next one is one of the most important things your antagonist needs. Tip number seven. Have their morals go against the theme of your story. Make your villain be the antithesis to your hero. Let's take Lots and Woody from Toy Story 3. Woody believes that the love between toy and owner is real and meaningful. Lotso's philosophy is that toys are made to be discarded, and that the love of their owners is not real or special. Where's your kid now, Sheriff? Their ideals are fundamentally opposite. In The Lion King, Scar wants a dictatorship, with him as a supreme leader. We shall rise to greet the dawning of a new era. Meanwhile, Mufasa's kingdom follows the laws of nature and respects the circle of life. The philosophy of your hero must clash with the villains. This is the conflict of your story. A versus B, light versus dark, love versus hate. These are the philosophical stakes and only one side can come out victorious. Tip number eight, give your villain a fatal flaw. We love villains, but in the end, they lose. They could defeat the hero, but they just don't manage to. Thailand's refusal to accept there might be another warrior better than him is what ultimately brings him down. Jafar's unending thirst for power leads him to wish he were a genie, thereby trapping himself in the lamp. Syndrome's own robot turns out to be his demise. Many times, the villain's own convictions blind them, stopping them from succeeding. Their very ideologies are why evil doesn't prevail. Of course, they're willing to do anything to get what they want, because tip number nine, a great antagonist believes that they are the hero of the story. Tai Lang has believed since he was a child that he is the chosen one, and nothing can change his mind about that, not even Po being selected. Lotso is dead set on toys being disposable, and his goal is to make everybody believe it too. One, you want your mommy back? She never loved you! Before we get to the bonus tip, I'd like to invite you to join me and connect with other passionate storytellers in the Write for Animation Academy. It's a monthly membership where we get together on Zoom to learn and practice the craft of writing specifically for animation. Discover everything that's included at writeforanimation.com slash academy. I can't wait to meet you in our next session together. Now, here's the bonus tip. To make your villain's story more interesting, give your antagonist a moment of doubt. Why her smoldering eyes still scorch my soul? When you make them doubt themselves, it's an opportunity for them to redouble their initial evil efforts. They can act in a bigger, more chaotic manner at that point. I'll find her if I have to burn down all of Paris. Follow these principles and you'll have a great antagonist for your story. Now, you're ready to give some love to your protagonist by watching this video on how to create good character arcs using three key elements, truth, lie, and ghost. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and click the notification bell so you won't miss any new videos. I am Pietro, this is Write for Animation, now go write something great!